1977, the Superdome, New Orleans, home of the Sugar Bowl. The setting for the Pitt Panthers to finish one of the miracles of modern college football. The Panthers beat Georgia 27-3 to claim without dispute the collegiate football championship. Among those who took Pitt football from 1-10 in 10 to a perfect season last year, the most obvious number 33, Tony Dorsett. The Heisman Trophy winner who set 15 NCAA individual records and 34 school records, he's gone. But he left on a high note. And Johnny Majors, the coach who guided the Panthers from oblivion to the top of the mountain in just four seasons, he's gone home to Tennessee. But there are lots of strong people left. And today on NCAA football from Pitt Stadium in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, the Pitt Panthers of Pittsburgh take on the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. This ABC Sports Exclusive is brought to you by Mutual of New York. Money for the future. And by Tuborg Gold, the golden beer of Danish King. Tuborg Brewery Limited, Baltimore, Maryland. It seems like an annual requirement for any team to claim a national championship. You've got to beat Notre Dame. They 1976 from the Irish, won 9 out of 12. Ranked 12th from the nation. Beat Penn State in the Gator Bowl. 1977, all of the major polls have put Notre Dame at the top before the first game is played. As for the Pitt Panthers, they won them all in 76. 12 games, 10 major team awards, including number one. 1977 preseason rankings, AP has them seven. UPI coaches poll 11. That may rankle the Panthers just a little bit to be ranked so low going into the season. Hello again, everybody. I'm Keith Jackson. I'd like to welcome all of you back to ABC's NCAA College Football for 1977. We think we've got one of the best television schedules that we have ever had, and we know that the probability of upset is so pronounced going into 1977, it's got to be an exciting season. Just a year ago on this weekend, such teams as USC, Alabama, Nebraska, and Notre Dame all failed to win their openers. To give you an idea of what may be happening again in 1977, in the second quarter, Vanderbilt 12, Oklahoma nothing. That's going on right now. As for the Pitt Panthers, defending national champions, what do you do after you've done the Royal Concert at the Palace? Well, try to do it again, I guess. And the Panthers come on the field today with Jackie Sherrill succeeding Johnny Majors as the head coach with a team that's got to take on tough, experienced, and knowledgeable Notre Dame. This is a series that goes back 44 years as of today. Remember a story of a fellow named Saul Goldberg from Elkins, West Virginia, who was in anguish one time back in 1936 when he found out that his son Marshall was going to go to Pitt instead of Notre Dame. But after his son Marshall as a sophomore led Pitt to a 26-0 victory over Notre Dame, Saul was happy with it. Quite an opener for us today here in Pittsburgh. We'll have a look at the Fighting Irish in a moment. TV Channel 4, Pittsburgh. From Pitt Stadium in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, the 44th meeting between the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame and the University of Pittsburgh. This ABC Sports Exclusive is brought to you by Chevrolet Chevette, four-door hatchback coming September 23rd at your Chevy dealers. By Pizza Hut, when it's pizza you want and nothing else will do, let yourself go to Pizza Hut and take your pick of our thick and chewy pizza, our thin and crispy pizza. By Goodyear, makers of the American Eagle Radio, a new kind of tire built especially for the American road. And by Savings and Loan Association, your family financial center. And in the white, here comes the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. Jackson, working with us today on the sideline. Jim Lampley, up here, Ara Parsegan, is just as hot up here as it is down there. So, right now, let's spend a moment down in that middle of the noise with Jim Lampley. 
Keep this awfully noisy down here. It's also windy. And during the pregame warm-ups, I talked to Pittsburgh coach Jackie Sherrill about his freshman kicker. Now, during the last four years, Larry Swider hit every punt. Carson Long hit every place kick for Pittsburgh. Both of them are gone. And freshman, Joe Gasparovic, the punter, David Trout, the place kicker, are going to be handling the job today. Of the two, Sherrill is more worried about the punter, Gasparovic. He said he's the more likely of the two to be nervous. He is also a three-step kicker rather than a two-step kicker. And Sherrill believes that Notre Dame will try to put some pressure on him and maybe block him. So that freshman kicking game has to hold up. But Sherrill's optimistic. He thinks that his players can hang in for a half, make Notre Dame's players begin doubting themselves. He has a good chance to win the football game. All right, Jimmy, thank you. And, of course, we couldn't do a football game without the Silver Fox from Michigan, Mr. Bill Fleming. That's with two M's, mind you. Bill is with us. He'll be with us all season long, pre-game, halftime features, and most importantly, to keep you informed on what's going on in other important games around the country and things are happening already today. Right, Bill? So, Vanderbilt was out in front of Oklahoma, 5 to nothing. Well, we've got some updates on that one. Look at this uh, score at halftime, 15 to 11. Vanderbilt, the second division team so called in the Southeastern Conference against uh, what could be the number one team of the nation. So, stay with us for some surprises. Also today, Clemson gave Maryland quite a scare. Maryland won the ball game by the score of 21 to 14 on a touchdown pass in the last four and a half minutes of the game. And at Lincoln, Nebraska today, Washington State's great passer Jack Thompson threw a TD pass to get the Washington State off to a 7 to nothing lead, but Nebraska has tied it up 7 to 7. We'll keep you up to date on all the games. Right now, let's go back to Keith. All right, Bill. Now, Eric Persigan, as our commentator and analyst on this ball game today, you've been poking at it for some time. Let's have a final comment from you on what has to happen for one to lose and one to win. Well, uh, Keith, I think the fans watching out there, Bill, focus in on the defense of Pittsburgh. If they are not able to possession or keep uh, Notre Dame from possessing that football, all the great offensive skills are going to be neutralized. They're going to be on the sideline watching the game. If they are able to hold Notre Dame's possession game, keep them from driving down the field, then this is a toss-up game, and the advantage that Notre Dame had as far as the favorite is concerned no longer exists. So you figure 50-50 possession tip might have an edge. I think that's the key thing for us to watch in this football game, particularly early. We're going to put it on the tee between Notre Dame and Pitt in just a moment. Notre Dame and Pittsburgh from Pitt Stadium and Notre Dame will receive. So the Fighting Irish will get a chance to find out quite early in this ball game as to the performance of these youngsters that Jackie Sherrill and his coaching staff at Pittsburgh must depend on if they ought to have a chance in this ball game this afternoon. But what an opener we've got at hand here. The referee today, incidentally, is a pit man, Paul Bertha. The umpire is Bob Pickens, the linesman, James McGurkin. The line judge, Phil Barnes, Mike Nevin, the field judge, the back judge is Joe Dorenzo. And Terry Urick and Jim Browner have gone deep now to receive for the Fighting Irish. They're the officials you see. And they will have the sun at their back in the first quarter. The wind, as Jim Lampley noted, is swirling around down on the field, kicking off for Pittsburgh, one of those freshmen that Jimmy was talking about, number one, Dave Trout. Now, he's only 5'8", 165 pounds. He is from Mount Pleasant, Pennsylvania. But like so many of the smaller men, and Tony Franklin of Texas A&M comes immediately to mind. Not all that big, but when you sidewind into it soccer style, you can really get leg drive into it. And this youngster the other day hit one 61 yards away from the goalpost. So he has a very strong leg. There seems to be no particular direction of the wind that it might, in a sense, be kind of helping him as that quarter quarters across the field. But let's see what happens as Urich and Browner are deep. There's the flag. You can see it's wrapped around the pole. That's the kind of wind direction you're getting. So Dave Trout, a freshman, about ready to involve himself in his first college varsity game. The stadium packed more than 56,000. holding for just a moment as the uh, brand new scoreboard has just been put up as a matter of fact we were here some three weeks ago they were tearing down the old one then putting up the new one and wouldn't you know it the confounded thing was working perfectly until they got within 30 seconds of the ball game and the kickoff and now it's sort of gone kaput 
or the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame, I think perhaps there's as much pressure on them today as there is on Pittsburgh because the Irish have been so touted in the preseason. They disappointed themselves last year with bad luck, key injuries. They felt they could have done better than they did a year ago. The series record, the Irish have a considerable edge of 29-13 and a tie. But remember, Pittsburgh has defeated them successively. And they would love to do it a third time. All right, we've got the clock ready to go now. It's Dave Trout to get the call. Here he is. It's in the end zone to Urich, a yard deep. Great blocking on the sideline. And he is out for the 30-yard line, to the 31-yard line before he is dragged down by Bob Jury. The temperature at 76 degrees. And here's the starting backfield. Russ Delation, Vegas Ferguson at left half back, Tom Doman at right half back. And the fullback will be Jerome Heavens, number 30. The wide receiver is Chris Haynes, number 82. We'll set the line for you in just a moment. So here comes Rusty Lish up for the first snap of the afternoon as he splits the backs behind him. From the 31-yard line, it goes to Vegas Ferguson. He's hit at the 32, drives to the 33, and hangs onto the ball. Along the offensive front for the Fighting Irish, and they have very good size up front for this young man to work behind. Tim Foley at left tackle number 73, 257. Horensky weighs 249. Huffman weighs 247. Ernie Hughes at 253. Steve McDaniels, 276 of the tight end. Ken McAfee, he says 249, but that's before breakfast. It is second down and eight yards to go. And they hand it up the middle this time, and there is nothing there as the Pittsburgh middle guard, David Logan, just blew him down. Setting the defense quickly now. Four, Pittsburgh, up front. Dave DeCicio, Bob Gruber, Logan's the middle guard, Randy Holloway, and Hugh Green, a freshman starting at defensive end. The linebackers, Jeff Belusi and Al Kesley. The secondary for Pittsburgh, one of the best anywhere. J.C. Wilson, Leroy Felder, Bob Jury, and Jeff Delaney. They had more interceptions a year ago than anybody. It's third down for Notre Dame. They need seven yards gets it up the middle and Jerome Heavens cannot get away they get him at the 34 yard line and it's fourth down Notre Dame and what do you think of the Pitt defense era very good start for the Pitt defense and interestingly enough in the first two uh, series or I should say the first two plays Notre Dame went to an unbalanced line trying to create some defensive confusion and I'm surprised that uh, Pittsburgh really adjusted without any problem all right, the football is sitting at the 34-yard line. It is fourth down, and Joe Rustic is back in punt formation looking at the flags. It looks relatively quiet. That's Gordon Jones, number 24, deep to receive the punt. High snap, but Rustic handles it. It's a low kick. It is a short kick. It is fumbled. It is now picked up by Gordon Jones, and Jones is thrown down at about the 30-yard line. Leroy Felder fumbled the ball, but Pitt recovers on a 33-yard kick. Now checking the Pitt backfield, Matt Cavanaugh, Larry Sims. Got a little heat on him today at halfback. Elliot Walker will be at fullback, and Randy Rudershan opens as the flanker. Gordon Jones will be the split end. So here comes the first offensive possession for Pittsburgh. The ball is resting squarely at the 31-yard line. And so their starting positions are exactly the same. 31 yards, 31 yards. Cavanaugh looks to the outside. He moves Jones a little bit. Now he's ready to go. Sends a man in motion. That is Larry Sims. Gives to Elliott Walker, and he punches in for two yards before Ross Browner comes up over the top, helping Doug Becker make the stop. The offensive front, Art Bortnick at left tackle, a big guy, 235. Jim Bowie, 247. Tom Brazoza, 235 at center. George Link, 247 at guard. Matt Carroll, 255 at tackle. And Steve Gostad is opening at tight end. He's a 220-pounder. It is second down at eight from the 33 of Pittsburgh. Kavanaugh turns and gives it away again. This time, Elliot Walker gets to about the 35-yard line before he is dragged down. Third down and six coming up. Defensively for Notre Dame, they line up this way. Along the defensive front, Ross Browner, Ken Dyke, Jeff Weston, and Willie Fry. In the linebacker position, Steve Heimsreiter, Bob Golick, and Doug Becker. The secondary is a good one. Luther Bradley, Ted Bergmeyer, Jim Browner, and Joe Restick. Restick is the center fielder, the free safety. 
is third down and six from the 35. Rudershan is in motion. Kavanaugh flips the ball back to Elliott Walker. He turns it up to the 40, and I believe he's just short of his first down as Luther Bradley, the corner man, came up in a hurry to lock him down just short. It'll be close. They have marked the ball beyond the 40. They'll put it down. The nose of it is short of that 41 where they had to go for the first down. And so they're looking now at fourth down and about a foot. Are they going to go? I'll be surprised if they go this early in the game. I think they'll put it in the air because they're both jockeying for position early in the game. You don't want to make any mistakes and put your defense in trouble. Joe Gasparovic is in the ball game, number 83. He is a six foot three inch freshman from Harrisburg and dropping back, Tom Bergmeyer is number 18 and Steve Schmitz is number 19. So here is another freshman about to assume a major role for the Pitt Panthers in this 1977 season in which they are the defending national champions. Well, we started dead even in that first defensive possession for both teams from their own 31-yard line. Neither one able to get a first down, though Pitt just missed. Pitt also has an advantage here in this quarter, certainly with that wind. That flag is standing up there pretty good, so with a freshman kicker, if he feels the ball all right, all looks like they're coming after him, too. Well, they've got nine of them up on front. Let's see if they can penetrate the blocking. Nine white shirts are coming. Here they go. Gasparovic kicks away, and it's a low-line drive. It is back to Bergmeier. He fumbles it on the 10. He's back at the 9. He's got blue shirts all over the place. And down he goes at the 7- or 8-yard line. It was a 50-yard punt with some help from the fumble. And so in the first quarter of play, we have no score. This Monday night, the Bruins of UCLA take on the Houston Cougars. Football on ABC. And here's a quick final. Kentucky has scored in the final minutes of play to defeat North Carolina today by the score of 10 to 7. Okay, Keith. Thank you very much, Bill Fleming. Setting up Notre Dame now as they go to work. Just outside the eight-yard line, it's Lish at quarterback. Vegas Ferguson is 32. Jerome Evans is 30. And Tom Doman is 26. And Notre Dame is in a hole. Can't afford a mistake here. As Mr. Wallace Wade said a long time ago when he was a brilliant coach at Duke University, nobody ever wins a football game. Somebody always loses it. Now the long remaining back as uh, Ferguson uh, goes in motion. And the handoff goes up to Ferguson, and he's across the 10, out to about the 12. They're uh, really mixing up their offensive formations. They're giving them a lot of different looks to try to create uh, distractions for the pit defense. And it looked like they might come out of there that time. It was a good hole. Doman is out of the ball game. Dave Waymer goes in at the flanker position for Notre Dame. Waymer, 6'3", sophomore, Charlotte, North Carolina, number 34. Pittsburgh playing the 50 defense against the Irish, but they too are moving around some. Big Randy Holloway, number 70, lines up over there, and here's this back to throw. Getting some heat from Hugh Green, sets up the screen, and it is Ferguson with the ball across the 20, across the 25, and nope, they're marking back at the 23-yard line. Now, we had the pass. We had the setup for the screen pass, which leads me to introducing the new rule that we've got this year. If you have a screen pass, all of your offensive linemen are entitled to fire out and go on downfield and block. If the quarterback makes a mistake and throws the ball beyond the line of scrimmage, then those offensive linemen will be in jeopardy because they'll be illegal. So it's a very tricky thing, but it may very well open up the game of football. Just outside the 23-yard line, first down, Notre Dame, the first one of the ball game, it's Ferguson. And Randy Holloway, I can see him, number 70 up at the top. On the bottom, it's Jeff Pelusi, a linebacker, a sophomore from Youngstown, Ohio. Watch Holloway now in isolation. Number 70, Randy Holloway, an All-American, a super football player. He veers down to the inside, fights off Foley, and comes in and makes the play. You can see that he's very difficult to handle. He also is a great pass rusher. And on the play of three yards, mark it out to just beyond the 26-yard line. Ken McAfee and Mark Saya now are the tight ends. We've got a pair of tight ends in there. And 
penetration. Penetration, I don't know whether it was movement by Notre Dame or whether Pittsburgh was trying to anticipate whatever it was. There was encroachment along the neutral zone, and it looks like it'll go against the Panthers. So there is your first penalty of the afternoon. It's a five-yarder illegal procedure. Dave Logan and Randy Holloway apparently trying to team up. It looked like they might have wanted to pull a little crisscross inside. Well, uh, Lish might have staggered his count there a little bit and uh, drawn him offside. It's good to do early so that the defense can't tee off on you. Quarterback should stagger his count. Right now, Notre Dame on second down, and two yards have a chance for another first down in this game. They averaged uh, just under 25 points last season per game. Second down, long two. From just outside the 31. Lish gives to Ferguson. Head down, drives behind the right side of the line, behind Hughes and McDaniels, and he gets the first down as Logan Holloway and Chesley make the tackle for Pittsburgh. The right side of the Notre Dame line with help from the center, Dave Huffman, but that right side is where you want to go with McAfee, McDaniels, and Hughes. They are Hughes. And when they go to a two tight end attack with uh, Mark Sy in there, six foot five, two forty, you got a strong blocker at the other tight end. Bet you have. The ball is now at the 36 yard line where it's first down for the Irish. No score with 9.45 to go in the first quarter. Now they're set with one lone remaining back as they put a man in motion and the ball is handed back up in the middle to Dave Waymer, the flanker, and Waymer didn't get much. I'm not even sure he got back to the line of scrimmage as he really took a pop and the Pittsburgh linebackers are really jumping in there. Looks like a lot of delay stuff. Oh, Ohio here. State off ball right today. Woody's uh, troops beating Miami of Florida 10 to nothing. And considering all things, I think that's a fine effort by Miami with Maryland edging Clemson 21-14 late in the ball game down in Death Valley. Michigan over Illinois 20 to 3 at halftime. And Southern California 14 nothing over Missouri at halftime. It is second down. And they give him uh, almost two and a half yards on that last carry. It wavers in motion, handed off to Heavens, and a good hard charge by Jerome Heavens, again over the right side, running right in behind McDaniels and Hughes, and it's Hugh Green, number 99, the freshman defensive end that knifed in to bring him down. So Notre Dame is looking now at third down and three. Heavens looked more like the 1975 Heavens there. He really picked up his legs well. He had good acceleration and uh, looks like he's healthy again. One of the things they're probably doing here is they may have decided they'd like to test Mr. Green, the freshman defensive end for Pittsburgh, because they've run at him now three times. The third down and three. They're down here. The ball is on the 38, uh, the 43-yard line. It's Heavens. He's got the first down at midfield. Good blocking at the point of attack. Tim Foley particularly threw a big block to seal off the left side to get Heavens around. And now, Notre Dame is doing exactly what you said they would try to do and what Pittsburgh must try to avoid. Exactly right, because you see Kavanaugh and all the great receivers are sitting on the sideline watching the action, and the pre pressure, of course, is on the pit defense. Although they're doing pretty well, they're not getting anything big. They're hanging in there, and it was a third down and three play that they came up with. First down at midfield for the Fighting Irish. No score with 7.45 to go first quarter. And the ball is handed off to Terry Urich into the ball game, and Urich cutting it over the right side. Gets down into Panther country to about the 47-yard line. Gives Jeff Salusi the tackle. Salusi! Here's Pelosi, number 51. Jackie Sherrill's very high on him. Here he is, wiping off to the left. Wards off the block of McDaniels, it looks like. Comes to the hole. Here's Terry Urich, who is really a hard runner, number 40. He's one of the tri-captains. Good, very fine tackle. That's the way you want to see the linebackers do it. Give him three yards, make it second down seven, just inside the 47 of Pittsburgh. Lish rolled. Got all day. Pass deflected, and it's intercepted. It was deflected and picked off by J.C. Wilson. And so this Pittsburgh secondary that picked off a lot of them last year comes up with one there. But it was one of the linemen up front that tipped the ball that made it possible for Wilson, though I thought Lish tried to force it. I say he did because he had the corner that was no contained. Lish could have run up the sideline for 10 or 15 yards and he threw the ball into traffic. That will not help his confidence. And so Pittsburgh gets the ball back at the 46-yard line. So bang, bang, like that. Things change. Kavanaugh set. Sims 
and Elliot Walker behind him. Rudishan wide to the right. And Kavanaugh hands it off to Larry Sims, and he's the young man in the position that Tony Dorsett okay, made here at right Pittsburgh. Right. He hits straight ahead up close to midfield. That's okay. just rolling out. You see, he got the corner. He could have run. There was no contain. He threw back into traffic. There was three guys in there, and of course, uh, Wilson came up with the ball, number 21. He had Waymer beyond coverage, however. If he looped it, he might have been able to get away with it. But whatever he did, it is second down. And uh, long six for Pitt. Rudishan is in motion. Kavanaugh yet to throw this afternoon. Keeps it inside. And Elliot Walker is down to the Irish 47-yard line. Jeff Weston, a junior out of Rochester, New York, made the stop. So here comes Pitt now on third and short. The Pittsburgh offense in 76. Pretty tough. Why not? <laughs> they might look at a quick little pass here as a possession pass. It would be the right time for it, although they're trying to establish a running game, which somewhat surprises me because I thought they would put it up in the air earlier. Third down, short four. Just outside the Irish 47. Kavanaugh pitches it off to Sim. Turns the corner. First go. I don't know if he got there or not. The ball went out of bounds, and we'll just have to see where they mark it. As the ball came loose, Doug Becker was over there scratching and grabbing. And he may be just a little bit short. If he is just a little bit short, I wouldn't be surprised at this point of the ball game to see Pitt gamble and go. Tom Brazoza shaken up a little bit on the play. The center, he was a guard last year. They moved him to center. Somebody forgot to tell Tom that he was going to play center. He showed up at camp and said, hey, you're our center. And he said, who, me? I'm not sure I want to do it. <laughs> Well, I, uh, I talked to the offensive line coaches yesterday, and they said that Walt Brown, who would be the replacement for the Bozo, uh, is a pretty good football player, so there isn't a big drop-off. No score. First quarter of time is out. We'll be right back. for just a moment, I guess, and some of our sound. It's fourth down. They need about a foot. Pittsburgh is going to gamble and go. Just short of the Notre Dame 44-yard line. Matt Cavanaugh sets his offensive unit. Pittsburgh trying and gambling some here for a first down, and Cavanaugh keeps it. And Matt drives over the left side. He moves right in behind Walt Brown and Jim Bowie, and he gets the first down. It's inside or right around the Fighting Irish 43-yard line. We're working now to get our picture back to you. We'll try to give you a radio call on it as we go along. Well, they figure it's close enough to measure. They don't give him the penetration as far down as the 43-yard line. So Pittsburgh gambling early in the ball game with five minutes and 46 seconds to play in the first quarter and no score. Rusty Lish had a pass picked off. Pittsburgh gambles. Matt Cavanaugh standing right in the crowd to have a look at it to see whether or not it's a first down. They stretch the chain out. Matt says, yes, it is a first down. Fighting Irish have not conceded it. It must be very close. We're waiting for Paul Bertha, the referee, to say first down, and there it is. So the gamble pays off by just that much. Geez, I, uh, apparently, Kavanaugh must have dropped that ball because he penetrated far beyond the Looks first like down it. marker. He might have dropped that ball, and uh, they marked the ball at that point. Tom Brazoza, who was shaken up a moment ago and replaced by Walt Brown, has now returned to the ball game. So he is in there to handle the snaps, big number 67, as Kavanaugh brings his team up. He sets his backs behind him, splitting Larry Sims and Elliot Walker. He sends Randy Rudershan in motion, coming from left to right. And Kavanaugh's back to throw. Becker's after him. Kavanaugh's pass underthrown. He bounced the ball downfield intended for Gordon Jones as Becker was coming, looping from the outside and almost got him, putting the pressure on. Willie Fry was putting good pressure on from the right side also. His first pass attempt, it was a run-action pass, but they did not get the protection. Again, we apologize for having lost our picture. We'll continue to give you a radio call. It's been a few years since I've done a ball game on radio, but we'll have to keep up with it. It's second down and 10 yards to go for Pittsburgh. The ball is at the Notre Dame 44-yard line. Matt Cavanaugh sets Sims and Elliott Walker behind him. Comes down the line on the option, the big 210-pounder from Youngstown, Ohio. Turns it upfield, and he goes to the 40-yard line, as you can see. And we've got video again for you. That's a pickup of four yards off the play. It'll be third down and six. 
might look at a uh, possible screen or some gadget at this point. They're at the 40 yard line. And if they could grab the first down, they could uh, be in four down area. It'd be interesting to watch this call. All right, Dostad has come out at tight end. That means that Randy Rudishan has gone back in there. They've also got Gordon Jones in there. And we'll check and see whether or not Willie Taylor comes on the field as well to give him three wide receivers. Matt Cavanaugh has come to the sidelines. He's standing there now, and it looks like time may have been called with five minutes and seven seconds to play in the first quarter with no score. And now, here's Jim. Steve, one interesting note that people might want to keep in mind when and if Matt Cavanaugh starts to put the ball in the air often. Last year at Washington State, Jackie Sherrill fashioned an offense, very wide open throwing offense for his quarterback there, Jack Thompson, junior who's now known as the throwing Samoan. In putting in the same passing offense here at Pittsburgh this year, uh, Coach Sherrill had, there's a lion walking in front of me, Coach Sherrill had uh, his quarterback, Matt Cavanaugh, watch a great deal of film of Washington State's offense. And Cavanaugh has become perhaps the biggest booster and admirer of one of his rivals for the All-American quarterback spot, Jack Thompson. Cavanaugh says that he thinks the throw in Samoan is the best passer he's ever seen in college. Cavanaugh's a pretty good one himself. He, all right, we've got that wide alignment we mentioned that Willie Taylor, Gordon Jones, Randy Rudershan are all in there, and all three can fly. And it is third down and six, and Kavanaugh straight back. He has time. He throws it short to Walker out of the backfield. Elliott Walker fighting for the first down yardage, and he looks like he's got it. Out of about the Notre Dame 33-yard line, as Doug Becker and Ted Bergmeyer brought him down, and that time he had protection. Not only that, but he, uh, he hit his third receiver, his principal receiver, were covered, and he hit the back coming out of the backfield, which shows the kind of experience that you get out of a guy that throws the ball like this. Look at him looking downfield. He's not open. He gets pressure, and he dumps the ball off. I think this is experience. And it's a first down for Pittsburgh. Deepest penetration of the ball game at the Notre Dame 33-yard line. Kavanaugh keeping turns it upfield now, giving it away to Elliott Walker, who's playing a little lighter this year, 187 pounds. Jeff Weston cut him down, but he's across the 30 to the 29. That's going to be a gain of four for Elliott Walker. Looks like one of the cheerleaders ran into a little misfortune, got her arm in a sling. It's kind of a hard way to start a season, isn't it? Five carries and 16 yards now for Elliott Walker. Of course, the way they get out there and flop around and jump up and down, <laughs> you can see why somebody might break an arm. <laughs> Second down and six yards to go from the Irish 29 for Pittsburgh. Kavanaugh keeps it. Upfield he goes. You can see he's very strong. He is not timid at all. He just puts that head down and muscled his way down. Strider and Becker on the tackle for the Irish. And the ball is marked just inside the 25. That's four more. It's third and two. Now watch the ball handling. Third down. Two. Looks like Ken Dyke that time went totally and fully for the wrong man as he jumped well, all over Elliot Walker. You have to respect that dive man because that's the shortest distance between two points and you just can't let a guy go through there if you think he might have the ball. Third down. It's a long two. Kavanaugh. Breaks through. First down inside the 20. Takes it for a first down at the Notre Dame 18-yard line. He's gained 16 yards now in four carries. Well, they're moving the ball a little better on the ground than I, than I thought prior to the ball game. And uh, they still have that dangerous passing attack to concern yourself with. And they're doing a lot of it right up the middle. All right, first down from the Irish 18-yard line. Kavanaugh keeps, breaks one tackle, dives to the 15, rolls inside to the 14. Doug Becker was the man that dragged him down. And so Pittsburgh is moving. Let us go now to Bill Clinton. All right, Keith, here it is. Washington State 14 to 7 as they move into the fourth quarter. Jackie Thompson is having quite a day, and there could be an upset here. And how about this one? Still halftime, 15-11, Vanderbilt, Oklahoma. Okay, back to this action. Surprise, surprise, surprise. On opening weekend of college football. And call it seven yards to go. Just inside the 15. Play 
it goes into the middle. Okay, and Pittsburgh now with Elliott Walker yeah. doing some heavy work along with Kavanaugh up the middle. They're chunking away. Interestingly enough, Notre Dame has gone to goal line stuff with man coverage out around the 15-yard line. And, of course, it uh, allows yourself to be vulnerable to one-on-one -on -one passing. So let's watch on this third down to see what happens. Walker now six carries and 19 yards in the ball game. The football is at the 13, just inside the 13. Where it is third down and a short five. Kavanaugh to throw. He's got some room. Gets it off. Man open. Touchdown. Gordon Jones. field he was leveled by Willie Fry as he released the ball but he walked off but he got the six points there's Kavanaugh being helped off he is holding his arm holding a wrist hold on disaster may have struck Pittsburgh Kavanaugh is going straight to the locker room for the doctor he is holding his left wrist here comes the extra point drive Tom Usick will hold and Mark Schubert will kick. Schubert hits it straight on. The kick is up. The kick is good. With one minute and 28 seconds to play in the first quarter. The Pitt Panthers have jumped out on top of Notre Dame 7 to nothing. A replay of the touchdown pass. Kavanaugh to Jones. Let's see if we can pick up what happened to Matt Kavanaugh. He's in the locker room. Now you see him roll out. He has a lot of room. Pursuing behind him is Willie Fry. The ball is gone. Fry levels him. A clean, good, clean, hard hit. But Kavanaugh went down very hard with Fry just vomiting. You really can't see here whether or not he falls on his wrist. He was holding his left wrist as he went out. Whether he falls on his left wrist or whether it's squeezed in there. It looks like he's putting his arm behind him there. He probably fell on his wrist wrong. So we'll have to wait to see what has happened to the Pittsburgh quarterback. You saw experience on that touchdown march really pay off. 54-yard drive in 13 plays, a 12-yard pass for the touchdown. Dave Trout now will kick off for the Panthers. Terry Urich and Jim Browner are deep for Notre Dame. With a minute and 28 seconds to play in the first quarter, the Panthers lead it 7 to nothing. Now here's that young freshman with a big leg. Last time he hit it, he knocked it in the end zone. He didn't get that much out of this one. It's going to be fielded by Urich at the eight-yard line. Comes to the sidelines. And the Panthers are letting them get over to the sidelines a little bit. The return is out to around the 26-yard line where Jeff Delaney made contact and brought him down. We've got an offside call against Pittsburgh. Back up field. Somebody, probably Randy Rudershan, was ahead of the kicker because uh, back in his younger days, as a freshman and a sophomore here, they called him the kamikaze kid because he'd come blasting down that field and get somebody. Ken McAfee, a tri-captain for the Irish, indicating that they will accept the penalty. They would like to have Pittsburgh kick again. Oh, Randy, a year ago, he was really a kamikaze kid. He's come down. He, he's real throw his body. He's really something. You know, Terry Urick, number 40, the tri, one of the tri captains for Notre Dame, had a great season last year on kickoff returns. He's very dangerous, really. He's, he's not what you call a real fast back, but he, he finds the seams. He returned eight last year for 159 yards. So he's a pretty good guy. As we look down on the campus and the city of Pittsburgh from the Goodyear Blimp America with Captain John Moran up there handling the controls on an absolutely gorgeous afternoon. We're still waiting for word on Matt Cavanaugh. Jim Lampley has dashed off to the locker room trying to find out how severe the injury might be to the Pitt quarterback. The Panthers are leading by a score of 7-0. We have 123 to go first quarter. And now Dave Trout will kick from the 35. He has leg enough to keep that ball close to the goal line if he hits it. Drills this one. Uh-oh. Well, he got away with it. I yeah. know. Yeah. He didn't have possession. I thought surely they'd blow that ball dead right back there. Yeah. If both of his knees were down. There's another penalty flag on the field, so let's see what that call is here. It might well be the other way this time, but I'm, I'm very surprised that the... Uh, 
And Notre Dame back was able to get up and, and run the ball back up field because I thought both of his knees were on the ground. We've got a clipping call against Notre Dame anyway, so that's going to back him up half the distance. I guess you can be down on both knees as long as you don't have any possession of the ball. And he was sort of boxing it around a little bit before he did get the handle on it. The penalty has been backed up now to the 13-yard line of Notre Dame, and there they are. Now, let's have a look at this. All right, here comes the Fighting Irish with Ferguson and Heaven. They are set behind Lish from the 13-yard line. You've got a man in motion, Doman. The ball is given away to Jerome Heaven. Missed by one behind the line of scrimmage, and he's hit down just about at the line of scrimmage. J.C. Wilson, who intercepted the pass, number 21, uh, was the man that got him. Dave Logan was the fellow who almost got him. They're really high on that Logan, who uh, took him over Romano's place. Uh, number 78, and the nose man, they say he's quick, got good speed, got size and strength, and they're looking forward to good things from him this year. Jerome Habits now five carries and 19 yards in the ball game. Ty Dickerson has gone in at split in, replacing Chris Haynes for Notre Dame. He's number 12. There he is coming down to the bottom of the picture. It's second down and seven, and Lish hands the ball off inside on a counter play to Doman, the flanker back, cutting inside. And that's a play that Eric Parsegan used a few times in his coaching career. Well, the guy that did it again is that Randy Holloway. Got an awful lot of penetration, got into the running lane. They had it pretty well blocked with the ex exception of All-American Randy Holloway. We're coming up on the end of the quarter. As you can see, the time ticking away with the Panthers on top by a score of 7 nothing, And they took charge of this uh, ball game about midway of the of the quarter and they right now have Notre Dame backed up on a third down and long and the quarter is over so it's always little things that add up to big things as Notre Dame now will be looking at third down and seven from the 17 yard line if Pitt had called time error they would have put the Irish in a position of kicking into the wind right because uh, Notre Dame now if they do not make the first down We'll be kicking with the advantage of the wind, and of course that makes a big difference. Anybody that's hit a golf ball into the wind or downwind knows the difference even a little spear like that. Wisconsin over Indiana, 14 to nothing. I saw a note, I think it was, in passing that the, the big running back for Indiana, uh, Hark Raider, was not going to be able to play today. Arizona and Auburn, that game was figured even going into it, and it still is, isn't it? All right, Rusty Lish is up there on... Uh, a third down and seven from the 17. Notre Dame got to be careful back here. Jerome Heavens, the lone remaining back. Doman now loops off in motion. Lish wants to throw. He's getting some pressure. Runs into his own man. And now he goes down back on the nine-yard line. Hugh Green stacked them all up and finally got the tackle. Looked like Steve McDaniels was coming back to help Rusty Lish. And Rusty turned right into him and everything stopped right there. So the ball is all the way back at the nine, where it is fourth down. So the Notre Dame offense looks so far unable to really untrack itself. We'll see as we go along with Joe Restick ready to kick to Gordon Jones. There's Jones, 24. Restick standing in his end zone. Panthers have three deep men. And it was Dave DeCicio, number 35, who came flying in, and the fumble made the play for it. You know, in college football, anything can happen. The one thing that uh, concerned Jackie Sherrill in this game was his own freshman kicker. And here's Joe Restick, a seasoned guy that happened just to drop the ball. These things happen in games least expected. It's a good snap, and then he just drops the ball. At least he has the presence of mind. He was trying to kick the ball rather than to give six points at least it's only two and the way the cco hit him he went in there blistering he was trying to separate him from that ball wasn't he? <laughs> he sure was you see the hit right there joe restick the son of the gentleman who coaches at harvard he really and he's joe a restick. fine punter excellent punter he's got good hands it's a rarity for him to do something like that. So Notre Dame gives up two points on the safety to make it 9-0 Pittsburgh with 14-13 to go in the first half. And now the Irish will have to kick it away. They put it up on the tee, which means Dave Reeve will be in to kick. We'll have a report on Matt Cavanaugh for you right after the kickoff. Jim Lampley has come back from the locker room. The deep men will be Gordon Jones and Randy Rudershan. 
with Joe Heath back there? Uh, get his number in a minute. But it, the important man is Jones. He's the guy Pitt likes to have run it. And Reeve kicks it straight away to him. Back to the 17. Cuts it upfield. He goes to the 39-yard line of Pittsburgh, where the Panthers have the ball first down. And here's Jim. He just will have to be installment one of what will be a continuing story. The Pitt doctors in the dressing room are still waiting for an x-ray, so we'll hold official word until then. You don't have to be a medical expert to see that Matt Cavanaugh has a broken left wrist. No question he won't be playing anymore today. The only question whether he can come back at any time this season. It looks to me, in my limited medical knowledge, like a pretty bad break. Keith? Oh, that's tough luck. In at quarterback is Wayne Adams, a sophomore, 6'5", out of McKeesport, Pennsylvania. Penalty flags all over the field. The uh, play stops it before uh, they get going, and it's an illegal procedure. So here, all of a sudden, is Pittsburgh rolling along, looking great, and bang, down goes their quarterback, Matt Cavanaugh, on a scoring play. And I don't think there's any question but what, as Jim said, uh, the man had a broken wrist as he walked away. And remember, he played only 23 quarters last year in passing for more than 1,000 yards. And now the pressure goes right on top of young Wayne Adams. There is a fellow sitting down there, however, Tom Usick, who picked up the pieces for Pittsburgh last year and led him right along that undefeated trail. It was not Adams, it was Usick. But right now, young Wayne Adams is getting the chance. They send Ruder Shan in motion this time on first down and 15. The handoff goes inside to Larry Sims, who's 175 pounds, sophomore out of Atlanta, Georgia, and Big Bob Golick decks him. Now, we've got a man over there on the sidelines wearing number eight. That's Gary Forstek. He's cranking up. We may see him. Well, it's possible. I really feel sorry for a guy like Matt Cavanaugh. He's a super kid, great guy, and uh, to have that kind of an injury. Uh, of course, the pressure and the heat goes on Wayne Adams, but certainly it's a lot easier for Wayne Adams to be the quarterback today uh, with a nine-point lead than it is walking in in a uh, tied ball game. He was a red shirt last year. It is second down, 11 yards to go. Rudershan is in motion. Adams, I think you can probably visibly perceive that he is a little slower coming Walker. off the snap with the ball than the predecessor, Kavanaugh. I suppose uh, trying to get warm to the task is part of it, but also worth remembering, he's six foot five, and a man who is that big might well not be quite as agile as a man at six one or two. I think, too, that uh, the coaches I'm talking about the Pittsburgh coaches, would be more conservative with their offensive play calling here at this stage, uh, not wanting Wayne Adams to make any kind of errors here, rather uh, uh, have their defense play and hold Notre Dame than making a turnover here that could be disastrous. And they do have a nine-point lead to work with. Elliot Walker's the lone remaining back. They have those three wide receivers in there. Let's see if Wayne Adams will be called on to put it up. He's having a look. He gets it off. He missed his man. Pass intended for Randy Rudershan, 5'10", 182, out of Mawa, New Jersey. And the pass was incomplete, so it brings up a fourth down. And here is Jim Gaskarovic coming into the ball game to do the putting. It's a good turnaround situation, really, for Notre Dame in spite of this uh, safety because field position-wise, Pittsburgh has to kick into the wind from about their own 40. and looks like they're coming after him again. They have nine white shirts up on the line of scrimmage. Snap is on the money. Kick is away, and it's a beauty. Oh, it's a dandy. All the way back, Steve Smith goes back inside the 15, and they bury him. 49 yards. You never know what the freshman is going to do to you, do you? With 12, 19 to go, first half, 9 nothing pit. Talk about some wild scores in football. How about this one in baseball? 16-3, to Toronto over New York. And uh, Boston, which won twice last night, defeating Detroit 4-1 to on the seventh. Okay, let's get back to football. That means that Boston will move within two of the Yankees with five games to play. Pittsburgh owning the ball, first down at their own 15-yard line. Wayne Adams, the quarterback, the youngster who redshirted last year, who was playing in relief of Matt Cavanaugh, apparently turned the wrong way, missed the handoff, and wound up eating the ball. And that's the sort of gloom that has settled over the Pittsburgh partisans, I think, with the news that Matt Cavanaugh does, in fact, have a broken left wrist and is out for at least six weeks. The type of thing that will happen, uh, actually, on the play, he juggled the exchange and uh, threw the whole timing of the playoff. We have Fred Jacobs, number 44, in there at running back now, replacing Larry Sims on second down and 10 for Pittsburgh. From their own 15, they lead 9 to nothing. Adams gets it outside to Jacobs. Jacobs gets up the sidelines. Oh, 
He can run, that fella. 5'9", 175-pound sophomore, and Joe Restick finally belted him out. Okay, uh, Jim Lampley again. Keith, the new piece of bad news for Pittsburgh is another injury, this time middle guard David Logan, whom Jackie Sherrill describes as the key to his defense, has a badly sprained ankle. They're going to tape him to see if he can play some more, but it doesn't look like he'll play any more in this half. Wow, it's piling up on the Panthers, even though they are leading 9 to nothing. They are losing key, key people. They've lost Kavanaugh, and now Logan may be gone for a while. It's a first down, though, on the run by Jacobs. Out to the 26-yard line, a penalty flag is thrown by the referee standing behind the offensive backfield, and that almost inevitably means illegal procedure. He's kind of surprised on the play before that where Wayne Adams came down on what we call a counter option, taking the dive and playing with the ball, throwing it out. You know, down in his own territory. I thought they'd be a little bit more conservative, but he, he executed it beautifully. Beautifully, that's right. He took the punishment and unloaded the ball at the right time for the first down, but that five-yard penalty there is going to back him up to a first down and 15 at the 21-yard line of Pittsburgh. In penalties now, the Panthers have four for 20 yards and Notre Dame two for 23 yards. at quarterback Elliot Walker. Fred Jacobs, number 44, is in at a running back. Willie Taylor, 29, will come wide to the left now, and Gordon Jones will go wide to the right side on first and 15 from the 21. Adams keeps the ball. He pitches it wide, and there's a great defensive play right there by Ted Bergmeier. Good defense by Bergmeier. Played it beautifully. Well, you, I know you're high on him. I think he's a heck of a kid. He'll just do anything in the world. Give him a hard hat and go out and say, sick him, and he'll play any position you want him to play. And that time, he figured it out exactly and was right there and made a very good open field tackle. It's not that easy when you're out there dealing with some shifty hip little old halfback. He's trying to juke you. You've got to be solid and know what you're doing. And Ted did a heck of a job on it. He's played them all. He's played all the positions. Ball is all the way back now at the 13-yard line, and they've got to go out to the near the 37, so call it second down at about 24. Taylor is in motion. And the penalty flag is down, and a whistle is blown. It was the umpire that time that threw it, sitting in the defensive secondary just behind the linebackers. He's now informed the referee, Paul Berther. It's again an illegal procedure call against Pittsburgh. So the Panthers, who looked reasonably polished under Kavanaugh, now are staggering around. And instead of having the ball up in decent position up around the 30-yard line, they are now, because of their own mistakes, back inside the 10 at the 8-yard line. I didn't see uh, the motion. It was a uh, illegal shift or a motion. I, think, uh, I didn't see it from upstairs here. Might be the starting count. It's a team game, and all 11 people have to be in sync, particularly when you get up into the trench of anonymity where the offensive linemen work. Second down and 29, and the ball is given to Elliott Walker, and there is no place to go as Ken Dyke, number 79, is right there for the Irish, coming from a defensive tackle position. It's the best Irish opportunity here. Pittsburgh is going to have to kick from their own end zone. The uh, Notre Dame ball club has a good return game, and they could wind up with excellent field position uh, after this kick. The Goodyear Blimp America out of Houston, Texas. And that's where we're going to go Monday night, 9 o'clock Eastern time, for the UCLA Bruins and the Houston Cougars. Two more teams that figure to be in the chase for that top position at the end of the season. Pressure's on. Gasparovic gets his kick out. Fielded by Bergmeier back at the 44. And they finally throw him out of bounds. But he came wasting down the sidelines to the 31-yard line. 37-yard punt. And now Notre Dame has its best field position of the game. Four scores, Bill. All right, Keith. Uh, six minutes to go in the fourth quarter. And it's upset written all over, doesn't it? You mean to tell me my alma mater is going to win an opening game in Nebraska? Wow. It's incredible. Surprise. They've got some good ones out there, though. Jackie Sherrill ought to know he put them there last year when he was the head coach at Washington State. Notre Dame sent Ferguson in motion. He's got the ball. Vegas is out there one-on-one, -on -one and he's tough. He's down to very close to a first down on that carry as he gets just short of the 21 before Bob Fury out of the safety position and Bob Gruber a tackle making. Stop. Well,
hard block to see the type of action that Vegas has. UCLA in Houston. Terry Donahue, UCLA Bruins. Uh, when I left Los Angeles last week, still looking for a quarterback, but they've got all the other two. Tremendous defense there, but they'll need it against the quick Houston Cougars. Houston may be the quickest football team in the country. We'll see them Monday night, 9 Eastern time on most of these ABC stations. Jerome Heaven, he gets it up over the middle, and he's in there for the first down as he goes from the 22 to about the 19, as Dave Lundgren has returned defensively for Pittsburgh. Number 78 playing on a very sore ankle. Now, Heaven, eight carries and 45 yards, so Jerome is rolling up a decent sort of a total as you see the time clicking along here in the first half. Notre Dame beginning to make some offensive noise, but they have still not scored. It's still nine to nothing, Pittsburgh. the heat on along with Hugh Green who dropped him. Well, that Green is, is uh, quick and he's just so awful. Hey, he's all over the field. Uh, Holloway and Green were the guys who put the heat on and watch there in the middle and that's number 78 Whoa. on a very sore ankle hobbling around looking for somebody to hit and he finally got his chance right there. So he puts Mr. Lish down just by being at the right place at the right time. He got picked up by the ball handling. Second down, 13 yards to go. Lish will put it up, underthrows his man. Dave Waymer bounced it in front of him. Third down, 13. Third down, 12. They're warming up, resting the holder. And uh, Terry Murphy, or uh, Howard Meyer, the snapper for Notre Dame, warming up on the sidelines in case they call Dave Reeve for the field goal drive. What do you think about a screen here? They'll be looking for a pass. Let's see whether or not they come up with a screen. It, uh, Notre Dame has been successful with screen. Well, Doman comes wide to the right side. He probably would be the guy to get it, maybe. They straight back. Throw short intended for McAfee. It's intercepted by Dave DeCicio. And DeCicio having a heck of a day. He scored a safety, and now he comes up with a great defensive effort for an interception. That is the second interception of the day for the Pitt Panthers. They stopped the Irish 5 0 to go. First half, still leading 9 0. There's a reflection.